Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as we get started here for today, I've got a practice question related to the non-systems. But before we begin, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that the sacrifice you put into this is is quite significant. I know that as you are going through your study process, a lot of you are working, a lot of you have a lot on your plate. I know that it's it's a big struggle. And so just want to say thanks. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for spending your time with me as we go through content that you need for test day. I hope this is helpful to you. If it is, please be sure to leave us a review. It really helps as we try to get the word out about this podcast. I know that, uh, oh my goodness, the number of, of messages I've got from people who have, they say that it, this podcast has gotten them questions right on test day, that they're so glad they listened And so if you want to help not only me, but also help your peers as they're preparing for the NPTE, go ahead and hit that like, that subscribe, the five-star button, whatever it is, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast, it really, really helps. It only takes a moment and it's something you can do for us as you listen to this podcast and get ready for your big test day. All right, so today I've got a practice question for you. This is one that kind of fits in the non-systems. It certainly is, it's related to EMG. So we're talking about electromyographic Uh, recording or electrical activity. And so I want to talk about EMG. We'll be talking about it specifically in terms of EMG examination. So in some ways, in some in some respects, this this may fit better into the neuromuscular system. But at the same time, it is related to electromyographic changes in electromyographic activity. And so therefore, I put this in the non-systems modality section. However, again, there's an argument that it could fit quite easily in neuromuscular or even musculoskeletal. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into our question here for today. So just a note about the non-systems. As we go through this podcast, we're going through all of the systems on the NPTE. We're now into the non-systems category as we make our way around the loop. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. As per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Which of the following signals is most likely to occur during EMG examination of a normal relaxed muscle? So which of the following signals is most likely to occur during EMG examination of a normal relaxed muscle? One, decreased insertional activity. Two, electrical silence. Three, fibrillation potentials. And four, myotonic discharge. So again, which of the following signals is most likely to occur during EMG examination of a normal relaxed muscle? One, decreased insertional activity. Two, electrical silence. Three, fibrillation potentials. And four, myotonic discharges. So one of the reasons I wanted to make sure to have this type of a question on, certainly on the podcast and then in our practice exams, is because as of 2024, they are introducing more questions related to EMG examination techniques, meaning that you have to be able to interpret EMG from an entry-level perspective, to have an idea of what normal is, what abnormal looks like. And so this question is asking you about examination of a normal relaxed muscle. Well, the correct answer here is that option two, electrical silence. So what does that mean? Electrical silence is normal for a relaxed muscle, which means that there's not a lot of activity. So, and I guess that's what you'd expect in a normal relaxed muscle. There would be very little electrical, electrical or EMG activity. And so therefore, as you have the electrodes, these are typically placed intramuscular. So these are intramuscular electrodes that have been placed and you're observing the activity on them. And so this is clearly what you would expect for a muscle that's not being depolarized or activated, you would agree that it's very likely you'd have electrical silence. So the thing I really wanted to talk about are some of these other incorrect answer options. So now typically, when you insert the electrode intramuscularly, it can create a spontaneous burst of activity. This is what's called insertional activity. And think about it this way, that as you very, very literally, as you poke, you give that poke for the intramuscular electrode, it creates a tense or a a painful response. And as you'd imagine, you'd see some tensing occurring, whether it be volitionally, if the patient really feels it, or if they're not feeling very much, there's still that disturbance and disruption to the electrical membrane or the sarcolemma of the muscle. This is what's called insertional activity. Now, it is expected that you will see some insertional activity. However, 
If you're seeing an increased amount of insertional activity, this is very likely due to either pain, there's some type of, uh, uh, I guess it is possible in the case of like nerve injuries or muscle degeneration, but decreased insertional activity, this would be in the case of a non-viable muscle. So you would expect insertional activity, meaning that it hurts as you, as you do the poke, as you insert the intramuscular electrode. However, if you have decreased insertional activity, typically this is the case of a non-viable or atrophied muscle, which indicates there's really not a lot going on with EMG. There's not a lot of activity going on. So insertional activity just simply refers to how you get a tense or a brief contraction response with the, usually associated with the pain of inserting the intramuscular electrode. And we talked about electrical silence. That's the correct answer here. Electrical silence is normal for a relaxed muscle. Uh, fibrillation potentials, this is, so this is one of the other keys I wanted to talk about. Fibrillation potentials, these are spontaneous depolarization of a singular muscle fiber. Now the key with fibrillation is that they are typically not visible through the skin. So fibrillation, just like in cardiac or EKG, electrocardiograms, that we would expect fibrillations to be almost like a, a very small quivering. There's not a good muscular contraction. Same thing EMG. Fibrillation potentials are typically spontaneous depolarizations. They're often seen in peripheral nerve lesions. So we're talking anterior horn cells, radiculopathies, anything that is that we would consider a lower motor neuron type pathology. These fibrillation potentials, they exist in a resting state. And again, it's spontaneous depolarization for these, these D denervated muscles, I guess is the key here. And so fibrillation, again, maybe the other big key here, and, and maybe I'll write a question about this here before long, but fibrillation potentials are typically not visible. So you're not able to see a visible contraction. You are seeing it, um, it is visible on the EMG. However, you're not seeing it on the skin. So at the skin level, you're not seeing any movement. Now, the last answer option here is myotonic discharges. So myotonic discharges, this indicates repetitive potentials that increase and decrease and are often seen with myotonic dystrophy. So we're talking really any type of, of myopathy where the muscle is being attacked. Um, yeah, that, that's the general category here, myotonic discharges. And so these waxing and waning action potentials, they tend to have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they sound uh, what, high frequency discharges that come and go, meaning they, they increase and they decrease. Again, related to myotonic dystrophy and other myopathies. And then the last thing, it's not on the list, not on what I talked about in any of the answer options, is the term fasciculation. So this is one, I've seen questions about this, the, the difference between a fibrillation and a fasciculation. So fibrillation, that's where you don't, you don't have any, any visible contraction, but a fasciculation is often visible through the skin. It's often seen as a small twitch. And uh, again, this is usually referred to as, as some type of muscle spasm or cramp that's occurring. So fasciculations are visible, whereas fibrillations are typically not visible. And just the note, I did <laughs> this just to not digress too much, but I had a, a patient, or I, it wasn't my patient directly, but it was my CI that was talking about a patient they had that uh, the patient had just had surgery. They were waking up from, I, I can't even remember what the surgery was, but they're just waking up from the surgery and the physician walks in and uh, checking on, checking on the patient. It was a teaching hospital. So the physician walks in, they've got like seven students with them and the, the patient's a little nervous. They're not feeling so great. And they had these muscle spasms that were occurring on their anterior neck. And they were a little bit worried about it. It's like, hey, is there something wrong? Like, why am I feeling these little muscle spasms? And the doc just looked at them and said, hmm, appears to be fasciculations of the platysma. And then walked out of the room afterward, <laughs> really with no explanation of what fasciculations of the platysma were. And the patient thought they were going to die. I mean, quite literally, they, they, it sounded, sounded horrific to have fasciculations of the platysma. Uh, that being said, this helps me remember that fasciculations are visible or palpable, whereas fibrillations are not. And so uh, you as a PT, hopefully you you never just tell the patient, oh yeah, fasciculations of the platysma without any further follow-up. So there you go. There's your question for today. Uh, EMG examination of a normal relaxed muscle will likely result in electrical silence. We talked about fibrillation is typically not visible. This is spontaneous depolarization of a single muscle fiber. Uh, so we're talking about like polyneuropathies, anterior horn cells, myotonic discharges usually occurs with some type of myotonic dystrophy or other myopathies. 
And then finally, insertional activity, we mentioned that insertional activity simply indicates the increased EMG activ activity that occurs as you insert the intramuscular electrode. And by so doing, creates an increase in EMG activity. And as you'd expect, it's, it hurts a little bit as you put in that electrode, the muscle is able to detect that and you get what's called insertional activity. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and bring today to a conclusion. I sure appreciate you spending time with me as we go through the, the material that you'll likely encounter on test day. And again, just a note about EMG. This is one of those things that is added, that has been added to the content outline for 2024. So on the list of things that are new, certainly worth spending some time with EMG examination and understanding really the analysis of EMG. And we'll talk more about that in the podcast. We certainly talk about it in our classes. Uh, we are we have classes ongoing continuously. Uh, as we get closer and closer to our April test date, and we do this for every test date, we have a crash course which takes you through cardiomuscular and neuro content. We've got pre-recorded plus live material associated with the big three systems. And so it's a really great way if you want to study just, it's like cramming, but better. You're able to go through the key parts of the big three systems very quickly so that you are prepared for it on test day. Again, I've had numerous students who report that just by taking that crash course and boosting up their cardiomuscular neuro, it's a great way to study on the last three weeks. It keeps you accountable, plus it refreshes your memory on a ton of things. Plus, just of note, the crash course is you get complimentary access to that as a part of our premium or VIP classes. So be sure to check those out. Again, rolling enrollment, you can enroll at any time as we prepare for any of the test dates around the calendar. I know that uh, it's stressful. I, I, it's a very stressful time to prepare for exam day, especially if you're on clinical. I, I've talked to a lot of you who are on clinical during these last few quarters as you head into test day, that it's stressful trying to balance it all. And I just wanna say thanks. Thanks for what you do. I wanna be helpful along the way. So as always, if there's anything I can do for you, you can reach out to us over on Instagram, Facebook, uh, any of the socials. Uh, we're certainly putting more and more content out on TikTok and Instagram these days. I think you'll love the little shorts we're putting out. So be sure to check us out over on Instagram. And in the meantime, keep a grin on your chin. Stay safe out there. We'll crane fist pumps all around and I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Thanks everyone. 